Hi, my name is Ryan O'Connell, and I'm an American winemaker in the south of France. A lot of people, when I first came here, immediately assumed that I'd be making American-style wines. Over overworked, over-oaked, parkerized, we can say sometimes, flavor bombs. But in general, there's a connotation that there's more concentration on the winemaker's work, and the sense of place, or terroir, as the French like to talk about, is kind of overlooked. Uh, there's this dichotomy. It's, it's always either or. Either you're making a, a vin de faux, something that really shows the workmanship, or you're making a vin de terroir, something that really reflects the place. Now, obviously, you want to make a wine that has a healthy balance of the two, but at the same time, you want to fight people's expectations. And since everybody assumes I'm going to be making overworked wines that could be made anywhere on earth and that don't really reflect the tail well, well, you, you got to fight that expectation. That's why O Vineyards is happy to announce that in 2010 we've released a new cuvee that's uh, going to be very indicative of the tail well. We finally found a new way to, to work the vines and, and bring in a product that's uh, going to be untainted by all the, the human side of it. And it's just going to be a pure reflection of the uh, terroir. It's cuvée terroir. Oh, it's a little tough coming out of the bottle here. There we go. Apparently you have to shake it before pouring. Nice stratification. You can really see the body on this wine. It's a good color. You know, I expected this to be uh, redder than it is, but the clay up there, I guess, I guess it's uh, it's dried out a little now that it's in bottle, and uh, you're getting a a pale uh, white clay. Judging by the way it's knocking around the glass, sounds like there's some twigs, small stones in there. Yeah, it's the twigs. This, this, uh... <laughs> it's a... It's a chalky quality, nice minerality. I'm gonna say very fresh. I'm surprised because it starts off very, very uh, harsh, and then, um, and then in the mouthfeel it kind of smooths out very quickly. Once your saliva starts mixing in there, you get a little bit more of the, the wet clay, that mud feel. Um, all in all, the aromatic experience, pretty toned down, a little, uh, little dead leaf. Well, that's probably literal, and uh, and then it finishes uh, pretty quickly. Um, and you guys kind of still have those sand and dirt crystals in there. Interesting. I think I spit out most of the twig. Well, you know, there's a lot to say about a wine like this. Uh, you're not, <laughs> you're, you're staying fresh and, and, uh, on the natural qualities of the tail, wow. But you lose a lot of the fruit, you know, you don't get those overripe products. This is probably coming in. One of the nice things about a, a wine that's worked uh, with such a non-interventionist style, it's very low in alcohol. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, drink a several glasses like this, and uh, you won't be over the limit alcohol-wise. Uh, I mean, you might have a hard time digesting it afterward, but that's c'est la vie. you got to make some choices. This is one of the worst ideas I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Uh, these bottles are actually for sale because I have a bunch of bottles and I have a bunch of dirt. And this, uh, this nice little bottle of Tail Wow can be yours. Uh, or you could buy my real wine, which is a clever balance between a vin de Tail Wow and a vin de Fort. Uh,
think it's important to remember that you want both both place and person in a wine. <laughs>